Are you ready to self-host your very own N8N server? Well, in this video, I'm gonna show you how to deploy your own N8N server using Node.js and Ubuntu. Now, this can work on any platform that has an Ubuntu server. That being said, today we're gonna be deploying on Volter. And by the end of this, you'll have your very own automated workflow system running in the cloud. Now, as mentioned previously, today we are going to be deploying using Node.js. That being said, there is a Docker deploy available. The reason why we're not using Docker today is because it's a little bit less performance based. If you want something a little bit more beefy that can handle more complicated automations, then this is the tutorial for you. But if you want the slightly easier Docker install, I do have a tutorial for that. So you can go ahead and check that out. All right, so first go ahead and open your hosting account. Now I'm using Volto, you can use whatever you want though. Let's go ahead and deploy a server. All right, and for this one, I'm going to use a shared CPU just because it brings the cost down. Now, where it's located really just depends on where you're at. That doesn't matter so much. I'm going to choose Miami because it's a little bit closer to where I'm at now. Then in terms of the image, we want to use Ubuntu, and you want to make sure it is the latest LTS version. That's really important. And that, after that, I recommend, honestly, guys, that you have at least four gigs of RAM with at least two CPUs. So we're going to deploy this one for $24 a month. That being said, if you're running a lot of operations, you might even want to bump it up to the four CPUs and the eight gigabytes. So once that's done, you can choose to do auto backups. Now that's cool. I'm not going to do it because I'm just going to delete this right after. And you can have IPv6 enabled. We don't actually need that. We also don't need any DDoS protection because we're going to be using Cloudflare. So everything else is good to go. I'm going to give it a name. And let's click deploy. All right, and once it's done installing, go ahead and click here and let's get the root, the password and the IP address. Then we're gonna open up our command prompt on Windows. So you can type the Windows button, CMD. Now this is happening off screen. Once that's opened, it'll look like this. Then we're gonna type in SSH root at, and then we're gonna copy this here and we can just right click so this mouse button right here to paste and hit enter. Now, sometimes it'll ask a question here asking to say, do you trust this certificate or something like that? And if you do, you can just click yes and you're good to go. Another thing is the server might still be installing. So if it's not letting you log in right at the beginning, it's because it's still finishing the installation process. So you need to wait a minute. And as you can see, it asked me about the authenticity. So I'm going to put yes. And then we need the password, so we can just copy the password right there, jump back in, remember again, right click, and hit enter. And it looks like we're into the server, so now we can start doing work. Now there's no real good documentation online about how to deploy using this method. So I went ahead and made that documentation for you. So it is a good idea to click the link down below and have that open just so you can copy paste the commands and follow along with this video. All right, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to upgrade our server. So we can copy this first command here and paste it in and just hit enter. And now it's done. So now some servers, they don't actually have curl installed. So we're going to install that as well. Now curl is basically used to grab packages from the internet. And we can see that our curl is installed as well. So that's good. Now we're going to install node virtual machine. Now this is used to control our node versions and keep them nice and tidy for use within Aiden. And it looks like we're good to go. Let's go ahead and double check to make sure it was installed correctly. And it looks like it was not installed correctly. So if it doesn't work, we can just copy this next command real quick. And then let's copy the previous command and see what happens. And now our version pops up, so we're good to go. All right, now we have to install Node version 20. Now, right now on the n 8 documentation, it is recommended to use Node version 20. That being said, this in the future might change, so you might wanna check the documentation to make sure you're using the right version of Node. So let's copy this command. We'll go ahead and paste that in, hit enter, and we're good to go on that. Now we have to tell our machine which version of Node to use. So let's do that. And now we're using Node version 20. Now we have to pull in in and install in in And we have to do the same with PM2, okay? 
So this is pulling the latest repository from the N8 and GitHub. Now, if you want an even newer version, like an alpha, all you have to do is put N8 in at and then the version that you want, like 12.1 or whatever it is. I just want to get the latest stable release, so I put at latest. Now, as you can see, there's a bunch of warnings for depreciated models and things being out of date. That's because N8N is using an old version of Node, and so we have to use the older version of Node, otherwise it wouldn't work. Therefore, there's really nothing we can do. That being said, everything is now finished, so let's go ahead and continue. Now we have to install PM2. Now, PM2 is basically going to keep everything running in the background so that everything is always working. If something does get shut down, PM2 will automatically automatically restart and it'll pop back up in a couple of seconds or maybe a minute later. So if your server ever does crash, at least it only crashes for a very short amount of time. Now that that's done, we're actually going to install Docker. Now the reason why we're installing Docker is to create a database. That being said, at this point, you could deploy another server for a database or use a tool like Supabase. Now that would be a really good idea if you want a really robust system that can handle a lot of really heavy automations. But for most people, this is entirely overkill. And what you're gonna wanna do is just make a small Docker container which builds the database inside the same server as the N8N. Database does not need that much resources. Therefore, we can deploy it in Docker just fine. So we're going to install Docker right now. We're gonna copy this command right here, paste it in, hit enter, and magic is done. Now we need to create our own database. Now here, ideally what we would do is we would change the user and the password and the database. I'm just gonna leave it the way it is, and the reason why is because I'm gonna delete the server in five minutes anyway, so for me it doesn't matter, but for you guys, you should change these information. So where it says my user, my password, my database, make sure that you change it. I'm gonna copy this, I'm gonna paste it in, hit enter, and we're good to go. Are you feeling stuck deploying your N8N or with other complicated deployment setups? Well, not to worry. I can help you with that. I'm offering a free 15-minute call to help you guys with whatever you may need. So if you're interested in that, go ahead and click the link down below. All right, so now that the database is up and running, let's just double check and make sure the port is open to the database. Now, it should already be open, but let's just double check. And the rule was added, so we're good to go. Next, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and create our environmental variables file. This is basically the settings file for the entire N8N project, okay? Now down here, basically what you're going to do is you're going to change all this information to reflect what it is your settings are, okay? Now, one thing, we did install version 20.18, not 20.17, so just go ahead and put that here. And if you need to remember which version you're using, you can just type in node-v and you're good to go. So you can see version 20.18.0. So make sure that this is the same. After that, you can put the user here. I'm gonna go ahead and fill out most of this information for you and then explain it after it's filled out. Okay, now I filled out all the information here and basically I put the email here, the password, I put the URL that I would like this to be hosted at without HTTPS. This encryption key I generated using ChatGPT. So if we go over to ChatGPT here, all I said was generate me an N8N encryption key for N variables. It generated me this beautiful key right here. And I went ahead and pasted it inside these quotes. This is the URL we're hosting at. These two are exactly the same. This is just a Postgres database. Now, as I said previously, if you guys choose to use different types of databases, that's fine. Here is where things will get a little bit different. You're going to have to enter in the IP address, database name, user, and password to wherever it is you guys are hosting this database. I taught you guys how to host your database using Docker. That being said, you can use whatever you like. Now, this IP here, if you followed along with the tutorial, is the same IP that we found in our Vulture account right here. All of this information right here is the same information that is up here. So it's basically exactly the same. All of this stuff we don't mess with. Now, these three here are for SMTP emails. Now, this is if you want to have password requests and some things like that. 
I do recommend you put that in. That being said, I'm not going to be putting it in for this tutorial, but all you have to do is put an email, a password, and a host like smtp.outlook.com, for example. Other than that, we should be good to go. So let me go ahead and copy this command right here. All right, and it brings up a blank screen. That's good. Then we're gonna copy this information down below. We're gonna right click again to paste. We're gonna hit Control S, Control X, and we're good to go. Next, we're going to copy the very next command here. This is going to start up the Anadian instance. Now, it's not going to work yet. It's not quite hooked up, but it's pretty close and it looks like it's launched successfully. Next, we're gonna save it to restart the container. Every time you save, it restarts the container. Now, we have NADIN running, but we can't actually look at it. So in order to look at NADIN and point it to the domain, we have to run Nginx. Now, Nginx basically takes the folder that's running on the server and connects it with the URL that's coming in. So youtube.horizon.dev will point to this folder that's running. So let's do that now. Let's install Nginx. And it looks like we're good to go. And we're going to remove the default Nginx file. It automatically installs a file. We don't want it. And instead we're going to add a new Nginx folder. And here at the end, we're actually going to add the URL that we're using. So this is youtube.horizon.dev. I know that looks a little bit weird, but I'm gonna copy that anyway. It should work just fine. And it looks good, beautiful. And I can pretty much just copy all of this. The only thing is right here, we have to put youtube.horizon.dev. We can copy this here, paste it in there. Control S, Control X. Now let's restart Nginx right now. We're good to go. Now let's jump into Cloudflare and finish this all up. So go ahead and log into your Cloudflare account and let's go to the domain that we're managing now. Let's click over to DNS and we're gonna click add record right here. And we're going to put the name. Now the name is going to be YouTube. And then we're going to put the IP address, which is this IP right here. We're gonna paste it here and we're gonna make sure it says proxy. That's really important. And let's click save. All right, so now I'm going to restart PM2. So let's go PM2 save. I'm going to restart Nginx, so system CTL restart Nginx. And I'm going to go ahead and UFW allow 80. Now this is to allow Cloudflare to connect and we already have that rule, but you guys probably won't. Now let's go ahead and check it out. Go here, open a new tab, youtube.horizon.dev. And it looks like it's working just fine. So you can go ahead and sign up right now and you're good to go. Now that your N8N server server's all set up, it's time to master how to use API calls. So if that's something you're interested in, go ahead and check out that video. And before you guys go, please remember to like, comment, and subscribe. And you guys have a wonderful day.